Okay, everyone, welcome. My name is Rob Altschmann, and I'll be your moderator for today's Harika webinar titled Belly Putter Fitting and Assembly. The webinar will be led by Harika's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. Jeff has worked in all facets of club making and repair since 1984 and has devoted the past 20 years to researching, testing, and analyzing thousands of different golf shafts. He has compiled his findings and research into the Dynamic Shaft Fitting Index, which is featured in the best-selling book, The Modern Guide to Club Making, and Total Club Fitting in the 21st Century. Additionally, he has authored the annual Dynamic Shaft Fitting Addendum, which instructs club fitters in the proper fitting and selection of shafts. Both books are available for sale online at hericogolf.com. Let me get a few housekeeping items out of the way first. Your audio settings are muted, which means we cannot hear you. And if you have any questions, use the question box located in the upper right-hand corner of your dashboard. If for any reason you must leave the webinar, don't worry. It is being recorded and will be on youtube.com slash hericogolf and on our blog in about one hour. And the very last slide, guys, will be uh, showing the uh, address of where the uh, webinar is being recorded for you to uh, jot that down in case you need it. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Rico Golf's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. Take it away, Jeff. Thank you, Rob. And more importantly, think of all those attending today's webinar on the fitting and assembly of belly putters. One of the hottest topics today is on the category of putters that's described as belly length. You hear a lot more buzz about them, not because they're new, but due to the recent success on the professional tours. In today's webinar, we're going to go over several topics from what a belly putter is, the history, swing technique, uh, fitting tips, and eventually assembly do's and don'ts. So sit back and enjoy. I guess the first thing we need to get out of the way is to tell you exactly what a belly putter is. This type of putter falls in between a conventional length putter and the broomstick or long putter category. The first thing you're going to notice is the length. They're made to an intermediate length, usually between 41 and 43 inches, at least for the commercially available ones. Secondly, you'll notice that they have either one long grip or two with one much shorter than the other. Where it gets its name is the end of the putter is anchored against the stomach or the belly. That's how it's designed to be played. Now there's been controversy for years regarding putters anchored to the body, whether they're belly or long putters. Purists think they should be outlawed. But for golfers who struggle with their stroke, they relish an additional option as the belly putter can be an excellent choice to renew confidence back in their game. Here's the reason why. Certain golfers don't keep their hands steady during the stroke. Some might even say the golfer is wristy or handsy. But with the butt end of the club anchored into the belly, there's less chance that the hands will push or pull the putt offline. There's also a common misconception that a belly putter stroke is different from a conventional putter. That is why I have a diagram on this page to show you it really isn't. The image on the left is a conventional putter, and the one on the right is uh, a belly putter setup. First, you want to maintain your normal posture, your stance, and your grip. While you might hear instructors say that you should tilt at your waist at a 45 degree angle for a putter, that's only an approximation. This gentleman tilted the waist at a 42 degree angle. This is by design to feel comfortable and balanced, as well as get the player's eyes over the ball. Now, if the putter was too long, this would force the player to make a posture change and stand taller to dress. Otherwise, the putter head would have to be moved or pushed away further from the body, and there, as, because there's nowhere else for the putter to go when it's anchored to the body. If the belly putter was too short, it wouldn't reach the ground without the golfer bending more from the waist. And remember, the putter should fit the player and not the other way around. This should be one of those panels that says, can you spot the six differences in this picture? Well, however, in this case, there's just one. So let's turn the slide, and you'll have a clearer picture of what it is. Okay. Here's a view from the front. 
we see the end of the putter is now anchored against the belly, as well as how the hands grip the putter as normal. The difference is the area that was empty between the end of the grip and the player's belly on a conventional putter is now filled by the extension of the shaft in the grip. How much? Well, if you consider a conventional putter readily available on the market is either 33, 34, or 35 inches long, the most commercially available belly putters are 8 inches longer. But remember, not everyone's going to have the same length arms or the same size belly, so it's not an automatic 8-inch add-on. If you use the buddy system, you want to set up with your normal putter um, and have someone else measure the distance from the end of your grip up to your belly along the same axis of the shaft. That should give you a good understanding of how much longer you should make the belly putter. Another option is to have in your possession two rulers. One would be a yardstick and the other a foot-long ruler. Drop a ball on the ground and set up the yardstick next to the ball as if you were going to putt with it. I like a yardstick because when I hold it sideways, it's nearly the same diameter as, as a grip. Next, you're going to place the foot-long ruler on top of the yardstick so it can slide back and forth or up and down on the, on the yardstick. And with the zero-inch mark on the foot-long ruler closest to the body, you want to slide um, the ruler up the yardstick until it hits your belly. And make sure the end of the ruler is pressed against the belly and not just touching the player's clothes. Then hold the two rulers and examine what the measurement at the end of the yardstick is. Let's say it's six and a half inches. That would mean the belly putter would be 42 and a half inches. And all I did here was add six and a half inches onto 36 inches or the length of the yardstick. You may want to do this a few times and get, a, and get a good average. Okay, here's a quick question. Is the belly putter a recent invention? Well, many in the know might credit Paul Azinger with popularizing the belly putter. Well, in 1999, Azinger indeed went on to play one on the PGA Tour, although he wasn't the first player to use one. The roots to the belly putter can be traced much further than that. On this slide, you're going to see what looks like the modern belly putter. Now look at the date. The Richard Parmley uh, patent here was issued in 1961. That was 50 years ago. Well, he called it a body pivot putter, and it would take much longer to coin the term belly putter. But let's raise a glass and toast the golden anniversary of the belly putter. Now, can any old putter become a belly version? Well, the answer to that is no if you want a playable flat stick. There's some differences in the components selected for a belly putter. One of them may not be so obvious since the stroke looks the same, and that's the putter's head weight. Most of the name brand putter or uh, belly putters weigh in between 385 and 400 grams. Now you want to compare that to a conventional putter, which are closer to 350 to 360 grams, and long putter heads, which may weigh as much as 450 grams. The reason for the increased weight goes back to the putter being anchored to the belly. You see, with the club held in the conventional way, this enables your wrist to move back and forth more freely, while with the club anchored to the butt end against your belly requires more force. But with the additional weight, you don't have to exert as much force to get the putter in motion. Now, what happens if you don't select a putter that's heavier? Does that mean you won't be able to putt effectively with it? Well, that's hard to answer, as I've seen some golfers putt with slightly lighter putters, but in general, I think they lose feel and end up not putting well, and then going back to a conventional length putter. 
There's one other option for putters that might have a 90 degree socket that may only weigh 350 to 360 grams like many mallet putters on the market. We offer products called universal hollow putter adapters. And they'll convert these types of putters from using some sort of curved shaft to use a straight shaft. The adapters are going to be available in two different models. One's a plumber's neck and the other's a slant neck. But they add 42 grams of weight to the head. Now the lie of the putter shouldn't change as you're going to be taking your normal setup. And if it does, it's only going to be minor and unlike a broomstick putter that requires a much, much more upright lie angle. There's a couple different options you have for shafts when assembling a belly putter. The easiest is to purchase one dedicated for belly length applications. Generally, they're straight and between 43 and 50 inches long and cut to length from the butt end. There's also some curved belly putter shafts, but generally they may be single bend only and they're not going to be able to create any offset. This is where the second option comes into play, not only on new builds, but retrofitting an existing putter, assuming the head weight is adequate. We mentioned that the average putter length today is 34 inches, while the average commercially available belly putters are 42 inches, meaning you can simply add an 8 inch extension to your present putter to convert it to a belly length if you didn't want to reshaft it. This is especially important if your putter is already equipped with a curved or bent shaft, uh, where an elongated version is not physically available, or worse yet, it has a proprietary or, or specialty bent. Now most um, standard length putters utilize a shaft with butt diameters that range from 580 to 600. Therefore, you're going to need to know what size you have first. Perico offers uh, steel shaft extenders which are available in two different sizes. And if your shaft measures 590, you want to use the smaller size extender and then build it up. Although they're designed to extend uh, two clubs as they're double buttered, um, each of these extenders are going to serve our purpose well with only one minor modification. Here you're going to want to epoxy one end of the extender or into the shaft. And, and here's where high strength fast setting epoxy works just fine. Just let it dry before continuing. You'll find that you have six and a half inches of the extender that remains parallel beyond the, the um, shaft butt. On a 580 extender, the part of the end or the, 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 um, the other end that's double butted is going to measure 545, while the 600 extender is going to measure uh, 565 thousandths of an inch at the end. But that can be built up with two inch wide masking tape for basically four complete wraps, which will bring it up to the body of the extender. And before you add the tape, you or your customer can try putting with the club as is, which should be about nine and a quarter inches longer than before. And if it feels too long, well, just gradually cut it down until, until it feels correct, and then you're ready to apply the masking tape and finally the putter grip. Speaking of grips, we mentioned that belly putter grips are available in single long versions, which range from 17 inches to 21 inches. Some of these grips are round, while some may have a flat side like most uh, putters on the market to help with alignment. They're installed onto the shaft no different than a conventional grip with one exception. Because they're so long, you're going to uh, want to make absolutely sure that you use lots of solvent and work quickly. Otherwise, the grip's going to get hung up halfway down the shaft and you might actually have to cut the grip off and start again. And these grips aren't cheap either. So you want to make sure that you have everything ready to go before starting. The grips that are available with a flat side will need to be aligned straight as their longer length is going to make them more prone to being twisted 
um, when installed onto the shaft. And you may have to measure the butt end of the shaft 19 or 21 inches below the, the butt end to see what the diameter of the shaft is. In some cases, you may actually have to add masking tape to reduce the shaft's taper. So there's not going to be a noticeable gap at the mouth of the grip. Yeah, it could be a pain, but you probably want to do it right. And there's a USGA rule regarding grip installation that states if, if you do it, indeed use a two-piece grip, they need to be separated by a minimum of an inch and a half. Again, you may have to measure 21 inches from the butt end of the shaft to see what the diameter is. And if it's undersized, you want to ma add the masking tape at this time um, to reduce the shaft's taper. That way you won't get the unsightly gap once the grip's installed. Next, I would suggest running the uh, two-way tape 21 inches down the shaft and over any masking tape that you may have had to had or may have had to use. You want to pour a ton of solvent onto the tape and then slide the bottom grip down to that point 21 inches below the shaft. And remember to work quickly. And before installing your top grip, you want to pour the solvent back onto the tape and then install. And this should leave you a little bit more than an inch and a half between the grips, but it won't hurt to double check before everything's dried. Now, once the tape is dried, you carefully score the tape on the shaft between the two grips and peel the excess tape away. It's that easy. Now, there's a comprehensive look at fitting and assembly um, of your first or possibly your next belly putter. Now let's turn this over to Rob in the time we have remaining, and we can answer your questions. All right, great, great webinar there, Jeff. Great information, folks. You can see the uh, addresses of where this webinar is being recorded, and I'll also have the slides available too. It said blog at uh, youtube.com slash golf and on our blog at blog.hericogolf.com. You can type your questions into the question box, and we'd love to uh, interact with you. The question box is located in the upper right-hand corner of your dashboard. If there's no questions, we can wrap it up, but we'd love to uh, answer any questions you guys may have. Wait a few moments here. Also, folks, uh, please make sure to read our blog on a, on a weekly basis if you can. Jeff spends lots of time writing uh, very detailed technical articles, and they're extremely informative. And, and we've had some awards winning, uh, we've won some awards by some of the articles, too. OK, Gary is asking, is Harico coming out with more putter heads that have the 90-degree hole? Um, we'll have. Some, we're still working on more putters, but we have a series of putters. One's going to be for belly, and one's actually going to be for long, that they'll already have the lie built into them. That th Therefore, you won't have to worry about the, the curve shafts. And that was based on some of the responses we've had from customers. And those probably won't be available until probably February. All right, Mike asks, what part of the belly should the shaft be entered? Um, it's, it's a tough call because it, it depends on, I guess, how big your belly is. But um, personally, I like it just below the belly button. Um, but it's, it's wherever it's going to feel most comfortable to the customer. OK, Paul is asking, is there a specific lie for belly putters? It, the lie should be really no different than your existing putter. So if you didn't have to uh, alter, um, you know, conventional length putters, you shouldn't have to alter the uh, the belly length. And Ben asks, how important is the weight of the belly shaft, stepped versus straight? Um, some of that's cosmetic. I think the um, 
on the, the stepped, sometimes the, there'll be a more rapid rate of taper. You might have to check the shaft itself. And if it does, then you might have to have more buildup. Usually the stepless shafts have longer parallel butt sections. But as far as the, the weight, usually the, they're fairly heavy shafts. Um, you know, kind of like a standard weight steel. So the walls are pretty thick. And there's really not a whole lot of options for weight. They're, they're pretty much all going to be standard or heavier weight shafts. OK. Paul asks again, is there a better head to use for belly putters? Um, I, I Personally, I think the key factor is the weight, getting enough weight to be able to feel the, 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 the putter on the other end of the shaft. Um, there's a lot of people that like the center shafted uh, bellies, but I think that's a matter of personal preference. All right, Gary asks, is there any thought to using a graphite shaft in a belly putter? The problem that you may run into is, is because um, the putters are going to require a 370 parallel tip uh, shaft, is getting a shaft that's going to be long and stiff enough so that you don't feel it flop around at the end. That would probably be the, uh, the only downside. You should be able to find um, shafts that you might be able to get 41 or 42 inches out of, but beyond that you may have to extend them if you want anything stiff enough. Great. Mike asks, is it better to have a swinging door or straight back and through stroke? Um, personally, I don't think you can um, go perfectly back. I think there is a, a slight gate uh, swing that's, that's just natural unless you can, you know, manipulate your, uh, um, your stroke a little bit. I, I think it's just, it's natural that you have some arc to it. All right, Paul asks, is, it, is a straight shaft better than an offset or single double bend? Uh, it depends on the putter. Um, some manufacturers will set up the putter designed for a straight shaft. Others are for um, a, a bent shaft or really one for offset. Um, and that's, that's more for personal preference because in a lot of cases those could also be uh, the, the ones that are designed for offset and lie, you can use a single bend. Um, but if it does require an offset, I think those are probably preferred. Great. Any more questions, guys? Type that in. If not, we can wrap it up. I'll wait a few more moments here. All right, guys. Stay tuned for next month's webinar. And have a great week, and we'll be in touch with you next month. Just stay tuned to our emails. Oh, well, Paul has one more. Well, maybe he just cut it off. Paul, you can always uh, ask uh, Jeff in the email at jsummit at com. Thanks again, Jeff, and thanks everyone else. Take care, guys. Talk to you.